After the race two weeks ago at Mexico City, Barry Juveno's lead has fallen down to 44 points over Ryan Jeffries, who is in second place, but he's still over a race ahead of the rest of the field. Green Valley Motorplex is the track this week, and it is a clockwise turning racetrack, so the drivers are going to have to turn right, something that they haven't done at a speedway since last year's running. Zach Meyer won last year's running, and that was 200 laps, and this year it's 160. Hopefully that won't be a crash fest like it was last year. This race brought a surprise pole sitter in Cameron Taylor. In Cameron Taylor, he leads the field to the green flag with Barry Juveno on his outside, Blake Kamphausen right behind him, Isaac Kowalczyk starting fourth in that number 39, Omeka. Uh, Cameron Taylor, he leads the field onto the back straightaway, clearing Barry Juveno on the inside, and he heads into turn three. However, the next lap, Blake Kamphausen decides that he's a head enough of the spotlight and decides to take the lead for himself on the next lap, heading onto the back straightaway. Johnson Racing is definitely showing their form this year. They have three cars, at least three cars in the top ten, and they're definitely contending for the championship. Isaac Kowalczyk on lap three. Oh, his it looks like his car is breaking it looks like his car broke down, and there's definitely something wrong with that car. He slows heading onto the back straightaway and he's holding up a bunch of cars on the outside and he decides it's a good idea to just stop in the middle of the racetrack. There's a bit of contact between Ian Elias and Creeper Stevenson and that will bring out the caution. Blake Kamphausen leads on the restart with Cameron Taylor right behind him. Isaac Kowalczyk fell a lap down getting his car towed back to the pits and Isaac Kowalczyk holds the inside uh, not allowing uh, Blake Kamphausen to get down there, and he's still battling with Blake Kamphausen. There's still a lot of speed in that 39 car, and he's trying to get his lap back, actually. A valiant effort from that 39 car. This is Zach Kova trying the number 23 racing champions Tenere, and his sponsor up and left after his run at Mexico City, where he finished last two laps down. He's battling with Nikos Kostopoulos currently for the 10th position. A great improvement for that team. Caution 2 flew on lap 14. John Jefferson is battling with Rene Ricarmier, and Rene Ricarmier decides to dump him on the front straightaway. John Jefferson would pull into the pits, and he would continue on with some rear end damage. Under caution, the 0 1 of, Louis, of Lewis Jones blows up. He actually loses the gearbox on that 0 1 Pepsi Coca Cola Chevrolet and he will call it a day on lap 18. Blake Kamphausen leads over Barry Juveno, who managed to get by Cameron Taylor, with Isaac Kowalczyk and John Jefferson on the inside, and they make it three wide with Blake Kamphausen, and they both get by him, and right now they would both be on the lead lap. However, he gets by John Jefferson entering turn three, and they are battling fiercely to get back on the lead lap. One driver who's been on the move the last few laps is Claire Ossier in the number 21 Clockwork Team Lexus car, and she makes a diving move on the inside of Barry Juveno and Cameron Taylor for the second position, and she will take the position away from them. Lap 22, Claire Ossier is battling with Blake Kamphausen for the lead. Claire Ossier sweeps low, and she will clear Blake Kamphausen entering turn 4 and onto the front stretch, and Claire Ossier will lead lap 23. Your winner last week... Uh, Preston Bell. He's currently running in the 12th position. He's battling with a resurgent Greg Maddox. Uh, he is going to the 7 car next year to be a teammate with Cameron Taylor, the uh, 41. And uh, Claire Ossier is now battling with Isaac Kowalczyk, who's managed to stay in front of her for the past 5 laps, uh, trying to stay on the lead lap. And Claire Ossier sweeps low, and she will pass uh, Kowalczyk entering the back straightaway. Dana Jerpak in the number 96 Camaro, he's been nowhere this entire season, and he finally decides to show up, and he's in the top six right now. An excellent performance from this 96 Camaro, we've seen him nowhere this year. Blake Kamphausen is back to fourth by lap 33, uh, they're definitely seem the car seems to be fighting a tight condition. Tommy Urban, making his first start since Rockingham, is running in 30th place, battling with Christopher Loxanen for that position, and it looks like we've got a car blowing up in front of him. Uh, the 29 of Joe Craig is blowing up, and uh, he's going to slow down and uh, stop on the racetrack, and that's going to draw 
Caution number three on lap 39. The restart would come on lap 44. With Claire Ossier in the lead, Gaspar D'Souza is on the tail end of the lead lap because he pit under green flag conditions, and John Jefferson and Isaac Kowalczyk are posing another challenge to the uh, leaders as they try to work on getting back on the lead lap. Barry Juveno sees an opportunity here, and he decides to sweep on the inside of Claire Ossier. Ossier will lead the lap, however, Juveno is looking very strong, and he will take a peek underneath Ossier and try and use the back markers as a, as a block, and he will take the lead back on the back stretch. Creeper Stevenson running in 30th place. Whoa! Edward Carroll got a bit loose there, but uh, uh, Creeper Stevenson, he dives onto pit road from 30th. Uh, green flag pit stop, I guess. Claire Ossier looking on the inside of Barry Juveno again, and these two have been going at for the past couple laps, and uh, it looks like Claire Ossier is going to snag the lead back here from uh, Barry Juveno, but yeah, they've been going at it very hard, along with Louis Ballard in the 11 car there. Uh, Creeper Stevenson pulling out of pit road, and he merges right in front of Tommy Urban, and there's the annual Green Valley Automotive Gymnastics Show. Oh boy. Uh, Tommy Urban goes for several rolls here on the uh, on lap 49, and he will retire from the race after a spectacular barrel roll. Uh, Antonio Bersiaga under caution, lap 51. He he uh, loses the gearbox on that car. Uh, that's three mechanical failures now in this race by lap 51, and that's not a good sign. Restart came on lap 54 with uh, Claire Ossier leading over Louis Ballard who managed to get by uh, Barry Juveno with Isaac Kowalczyk battling again on the inside. Uh, if the race would end right now, that uh, 11 car would actually be locked into the field for the next race. And uh, Dana Jerpak is making an amazing run towards the front. Still, he's, he's running in fourth right now by lap 56 and he's just been moving forward and he's been holding that position. Uh, all night so far, actually. Uh, great job for that number 56 Camaro. Uh, Nate Lorenz comes out of the pits, and hello, John Smith, and we've got another entry into the Green Valley Automotive Gymnastics Show today. And uh, he just merges right in front of John Smith, has no idea that he's even there, and he just gets flipped onto his roof. Both the 6 car and the 66 would fall out after that. A uh, couple cars managed to get back on the lead lap, including Isaac Kowalczyk, finally. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza is running on the inside, as well as Creeper Stevenson. And, uh, ooh, uh, Gaspar D'Souza doesn't give him much room, but he continues on. Uh, Edward Carroll didn't serve a black flag, and he got himself DQ'd during that green flag run. And Dana Jerpak is making a pass up to second place by Louis Ballard, and he is quickly emerging as a contender in this event. He has been nowhere this entire season, no speed whatsoever, and now he's finally deciding to show his stuff. Caution 6 on lap 66. Uh, Zach Meyer, last year's winner, he merges up on track, gets into, stu into uh, Sam Smith, and a big accident happens on the front stretch. Samuel Brown involved, and the field is just jammed up behind this. Uh, he just clips the wall, and wow, he nearly uh, he nearly gets on his side. Rod Cook involved, Chris Benson, uh, Stringfellow Vincent, among others. Under caution, your points leader, Barry Juveno, blows up. He, lose, he has a burnt clutch on that car on lap 68, and he will drop out of the race. After that turn of events, Andy Lambert leads on lap 71. Gaspar D'Souza back on the tail end of the lead lap. There's a few more cars that are uh, a lap down. Ryan Jeffries in second, and uh, you've got Steve Johnson in third there in the number 900 extends Volpe. Uh, Ryan Jeffries looks on the inside, but he he's not going to get it. He makes a challenge the next lap. He's peaking low below Andy Lambert. Uh, Lapped cars seem to be getting in the way, but he'd be interrupted by a caution on lap 74. John Jefferson pulls up on track. Hello and whoa! Oh my goodness, we've got ourselves a third entry into that uh, Carbondale Apogrobatics show. Oh yeah. Uh, Brendan Kelly, he goes over the roof of 
the number 76 car, and you get a good view of the hood on that car. And best part, he continues on. Yay, American Steel! After that little incident coming out of turn four, Andy Lambert continues to lead with uh, Ryan Jeffries on the outside as well as Steve Johnson. Zach Meyer and Sam Smith looking on the inside, but they're not even gonna make it around for a lap because there was a caution right behind him. Blake Camphausen gets turned by Preston Bell, and uh, he gets spun around, and hello, rest of the field. Let's not use our brakes. This is unbelievable. There's a wreck happening in front of you, and you don't brake. These drivers need to learn how to use the brake pedals. Andy Lambert again leads on the restart with the top three remaining virtually unchanged. A few cars made it back on the lead lap, and... Uh, Funneling into the back straightaway, uh, Isaac Kowalczyk gives him no room, and you've got to be kidding me. Another accident happens because nobody gives each other room. Isaac Kowalczyk just pulls up into the leader, nonetheless, and gets spun around by Ryan Jeffries. Jeffries gets taken out, and a bunch of cars just don't break into this incident. After that little schmazzle, uh, Dana Jerpak actually moves into the lead with Rod Cook in second. We've got the hoodless Josh Marshall in third, with Zach Kovac in a surprising fourth. We've got we've got uh, lapped cars on the bottom, going three wide trying to get by, and it looks like caution lights are on. It appears there's been an incident. Uh, yes, we're being confirmed that there was indeed a caution on lap 91. Uh, Craig Taylor got uh, hooked by the 900 of Steve Johnson and just spun into the outside wall. Craig Taylor's been having a pretty anonymous day so far, but uh, that didn't look like it did too much damage to that car. Dana Jerpak continues to lead on uh, the restart. He's got Rod Cook, uh, Josh Marshall, and uh, Preston Bell has moved up into the fourth position. He's getting around Josh Marshall right now. I cannot give enough praise to this 96 car. They've just been doing an awesome job today. Uh, major props to them for getting this car up and running in into the lead at this point. Uh, however, after a la eight lap calm run, we got a caution. Uh, Zach Meyer gets spun around by Nicholas Corradovos and in a completely separate incident, it looks like uh, Louis Ballard and Steve Johnson have gone around as well. A little uh, bit of uh, three wide there, no giving room. Steve Johnson pinches up the track into Louis Ballard, and they just take each other around. Uh, not much else to say about that, aside from just not giving each other room, really. Dana Jerpak leads the field for the third straight restart. Top four has pretty much remained unchanged, except Blake Camphausen has now moved up into the third position. Ian Elias makes a diving pass on the inside, takes it three wide. Samuel Brown pushes up the track a little bit into uh, Dana Jerpak. But uh, there was a caution on the lap of the restart. Uh, Brendan Kelly and Josh Marshall get together. Hello, Wes Jones, and hello, uh, Cody Deke, and as well as Craig Taylor and Steve uh, Johnson. Let's all pile into an accident that we had no business being in. Dana Jerpak continues to lead on the restart with Blake Camphausen in second, Preston Bell in third. Uh, Rod Cook's been shuffled back to fourth. Samuel Brown makes a diving move on the 96 car. However, uh, the 96 sets him up for a crossover move entering turn three, basically saying, yeah, you're not getting your lap back anytime soon, buddy. You're going to have to wait just like everybody else. However, Samuel Brown wouldn't have to wait long, because there is a caution. Four wide never works here. Uh, Chris Benson, Brendan Kelly, and Andy Lambert find that out real fast. Uh, Chris Benson and Brendan Kelly get around, and they collect a couple more cars in the incident. Uh, Craig Taylor gets up by the wall, but most cars continue on without much of a problem. Lap 118, uh, Nikos Kostopoulos' car finally gives up the ghost. Fuel line issue takes him out of the race. Um, the restart would occur two laps later. Dana Jerpak continues to lead. Samuel Brown on the inside as well as Zach Meyer. Uh, Samuel Brown is reportedly not too happy about that crossover move. And he pinches up the track. And he gets into Dana Jerpak and Preston Bell is involved. You've 
That is ridiculous. You do not take out the leader out of anger. Preston Bell makes a move on the inside. However, he gets caught up in this incident and his day is pretty much ruined from second place. Restart on lap 123, Blake Kamphausen leads, and it looks like Samuel Brown's day is done. Burnt clutch. Uh, massive uh, case of karmic retribution here uh, for taking Dana Jerpak out of the lead there. Uh, his teammate Blake Kamphausen continues to lead. Rod Cook is running in second. And uh, there's going to be a short green flag run here. However, two laps later, there was a, uh, a caution back in the field. Four wide, uh, as mentioned before. <laughs> Never works here. Uh, Wes Jones gets together with uh, Andy Lambert and they take each other out. Under caution, uh, Sam Smith's uh, engine finally decides to go. Uh, another burnt clutch seems to be uh, the uh, problem of the day for most of the drivers. Blake Camphausen leads uh, on the restart with Rod Cook right behind him. Dana Jerk back up to third again. Ian Elias makes a diving move on uh, the uh, 51 car and ooh! They uh, don't look like they're too happy at each other. <laughs> uh, not too happy about each other not giving uh, enough room. And uh, continue on. Uh, Andy Lambert's car. Uh, well, there goes the gearbox in that car, and that means both Aftershock Racing cars have fallen out within five laps. Hate to be a uh, uh, engineer on that team. I'd be fearing for my job. Uh, Rod Cook running in the top five still at this point. He's uh, battling. Oh no! Burnt clutch is the issue on the 24 car. He's trying to make it down on the track. And hello, Zach Kovach. Uh, didn't know if he uh, saw him there, but looks like uh, everything was fine. No real damage to either car. Uh, of course, the uh, 24 is going to drop out after this. But the uh, 23 is going to continue on without a problem. Blake Camphausen leads on the restart. Nicholas Corridor is an excellent drive from that Greek driver in uh, second place. Claire Ossier runs third, Dana Jerpak fourth, and Rene Ricarmier, the hoodless Rene Ricarmier, runs out the top five. Uh, Rene Ricarmier, who just slapped the wall, uh, he's desperately trying to hold on to his position. He's way off the pace and he's just trying to hang on and salvage a good finish out of this day which has uh, been quite a crash fest actually. Uh, Claire Ossier runs second. She managed to get by uh, Nicholas Corradovos for that position and Andrew Tamarzan and uh, she's slowing on the racetrack. She's pulling down onto pit road. Uh, the team is reporting that there is a puncture on that car. Uh, huge disappointment for that 21 team and now the battle for second has shifted to between Nicholas Corodovos in the number 49 Outback Omeka and Dana Jerpak in the 96 Xbox Camaro. Uh, Corodovos gets the edge there however Blake Kamphausen has extended his lead over the two drivers and uh, Dana Jerpak has gotten by Corodovos for the second spot as well as Steve Johnson has gotten by Corodovos for third the hoodless Steve Johnson, I might add. Still, an excellent run for both drivers, Steve Johnson and Dana Jerpak. However, Blake Kamphausen, unopposed, takes the win at Green Valley Motorplex in a dominating showing.